Yes, friends. The listening session from heaven to hell. I had a listening session yesterday with a friend. It was so wonderful to have the opportunity to invite a, a fellow appreciator of music and audiophile over. And we just wanted to drink beer and listen to music for hours. And that's exactly what we did. Had a great dinner, too. And before I tell you about that, because we were listening to CDs and vinyl, this is good to get the dust off your records. This is even better. So, I encourage you to become an artist. Go to the local paint shop, uh, art shop, right? And find yourself an imported South Korean Han Hua Hong number two, 132, 40 millimeter uh, art paintbrush. Wow, this thing is beautiful. And it works so well. And you just put it on, right there's your record spinning around, right? You just put it on the, put it, you know, right there. Just put it on the edge of your record at an angle and let it go and slowly pull it to the outside. This thing, it really does a nice job. It, you know, wow. Great. I paid like $12 for this brush, worth every penny. It's, I like it better than my carbon fiber brush. Everybody has one of those. And I like it even better than this one, which is really nice. And they all work great, but this is my favorite. Find yourself one of these at, at the uh, art store. So last night, our listening session. <sighs> I'm so happy to say I have a great system. And... You know you have a great system when your listening session sessions can turn to hell because your system reveals how poor your recordings are, how poor your source masters are. And then you have to remember that that doesn't matter whether they're on vinyl or whether on CD. It's not about that. There's something about vinyl that there's a warmth and openness to vinyl, especially, I think... I'm going to say, especially in the bottom half, the warmth from the mids on down into bass, there's something about, there's a space, there's an organic, natural space. And then you switch to CD and you go, wow, it sounds so good. We started with this. We list, I, I put on Brother Jack McDuff, Concord Records, a double CD set. I mean, dynamics and clarity like made, made for the JBL 530s. The thing about the JBL 530s, why I keep saying they're my absolute favorite is because they're, they're, they're not small. And you go, what? They're not even a six and a half inch two-way. They were a five and a quarter inch two-way. I mean, then even, how, how does somebody describe these as having big scale? And it's not just me. Check with the other reviewers out there. Sean over at Zero Fidelity. They're big, they're bold. Yeah, they are, which is amazing, right? So they have scale and, and organ trio. Wow, space, crystal clear, fantastic, amazing. But you know, again, you're listening to CD and, you, and it's just, there's something with vinyl, there's a warmth and organic thing, especially you notice it with space that's in the bass and, and, and space in the bass. What the heck is he talking about? It's like the bass is removed from the rec, from, further removed. It's hard to explain. And I don't need to convince you, just sharing the listening experience that we had. So we started off with this. So interesting. He grabbed Gil Scott Heron. Remember this guy? Wow. He's not mainstream, but amazing music and his voice. The thing about it is, this is not a master uh, fidel. This is not a master pressing. It's not a mobile fidelity sound labs original master recording. It's just some album I bought when I was... 18 years old, and there it is, 1978, Arista Records. This record, besides sounding fine, has so much bass. I don't understand it. So it was mixed that way. So it's not compressed. Uh, it's quite nice, but it has so much bass. I'm just going, what's going on? Terrific. And you're going, vinyl, what? So much bass? Yes. I don't mean hip hop, uh, rap, kind of boomy kind of bass. I mean, that's uh, kind of a funk fusion type music. And then the disaster of the night. And it's so sad. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer works. Man. Even looking at the liner notes is inspiring. The musical mix. Keith Emerson, piano concerto number one with the London Philharmonic. 
John Meyer conducting, and then Greg Lake, his side with his acoustics, Carl Palmer's side with the Enemy God Dances with the Black Spirits, LA Knights, New Orleans. I mean, just amazing. Tank. And then finally, I wanted to hear, we both were like, wow, side four. Fanfare for the Common Man, their rendition of Aaron Copeland's piece. And it was unlistenable. As soon, it, Fanfare for the Common Man, you got the opening notes, and then the stuff comes on. The whole, it was garbage. It was not listenable. It was like, you take the music, right, and you go, it's like, hey, what, uh, studio engineer guy. Yeah, I gotta master this thing. What do you got? Yeah. Uncompressed, pure, full resolution? No, 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 no. Most people are going to be listening to this, are going to be high, and uh, listening to it through a boombox at a party. Oh, okay, so I'll make it sound good for that. That's what I think is going on. And it's so sad, because, and, and sad about Keith Emerson. Uh, this is such good music, and I, we couldn't listen to it. The Denon, I, I use the Denon, I'm, these days I'm using my Denon AVR 4308, which is a $2,500 top of the line Denon AV receiver 10 years ago. Th that's not a slouch. That's not a crappy AV receiver. It's got a very respectable uh, uh, amplifier sections in there, 140 watts per channel. Supposedly the two channels driving 170 watts per channel. The thing's got some balls. Okay. And uh, fine, it's respectable. And it has a restorer function. Denon, I made another video about the restorer function. This album sounds so bad and was so, is so compressed that even the restorer function didn't make it sound better. Which is like, I've got Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass, a couple of records that sound very nice. They sound clean. They have some space in soundstage, but they're compressed. And the Denon restorer function opens them up very nicely. But this thing is so bad, it was unlistenable. It's in the garbage can. So, so sad. And then we move on to Chicago. I've got all, the, the entire Chicago set. And we were listening to this one last night. And specifically, I wanted to uh, compare Make Me Smile and uh, Wake Up Sunshine and Make Me Smile. Beautiful stuff. Not bad. Not overly compressed, but... As a rule, all my Chicago Javinyl's pretty good. A couple of them are, something's not right. But the thing is, I compared to this Chicago DSD. This is a DSD, okay? And I'm telling you the difference between the two. I would pick the vinyl. The compression was the same. You could hear, it's almost like they came off the same master. And you could barely hear a difference between the two. And in the end, I picked the vinyl, but you could barely hear a difference between the two, which means, again, the issue is you're listening to the original studio master, whatever it is. So if it's poor, it's poor. And your system, great to know that you have a system that can tell you these things. Okay. And that's the Chicago story. Now, this was Chicago's first album, Chicago Transit Authority. Fabulous. Right? And it is. And when you listen to uh, does anyone really know what time it is in the beginnings and, and you're listening to it and you're going, yeah. So this one's nice. This is, I'd say, the best one. Uh, again, some compression, Columbia Records, but very little. And I'm not seeing the date on it. I wanted to tell you, well, we know it's like early 70s, right? So this is very nice, Chicago Transit Authority. And then the story of the night was made in Ferguson because... Folks, that is Maynard Ferguson and the Big Bop Nouveau, One More Trip to Birdland. And this baby is an SACD, DSD, and it's a real one. It's the real deal. This thing is incredible. You put this in, you know, again, I got a $500 CD player. It's okay. You put this thing in and you just go, wow, incredible. The brass like just knocks you out of your chair. And with the JBL, Compression horn, compression drivers, low horn loaded. I mean, that's what these speakers are made for. Refined, refined, but lively mids, no honky, nothing, no harsh anything out of these babies. So this is a dream come true. And I have two 
Maynard Ferguson vinyl. Here's one of them, MF Horn 2. I also have MF Horn 3. And we put in Spinning Wheel and Country Road and the theme from Shaft, theme from Summer of 42. Not compressed, not bad. Good amount of bass, lower mids, the lower brass like the trombones, some space and soundstage, but the high end was, no, it was hash. The high end and the upper brass and the high end cymbals were like hash. And what are you gonna do? So it's not the cartridge, it's not the turntable, it's this vinyl, it's this recording. And that's the story, and that's how it works, you know. And now, again, here's early 1962, George Shearing Quintet, Satin Brass, Capital Full Dimension Records, ST1326, in case you're wondering. Side 2 in particular is my favorite. Actually got a lot of surface noise, but it's not compressed. It's got space. It sounds so nice, and even... In fact, even with the surface noise that I'm hearing, I, I guess it's a bit older and worn and beat up, I'm still hearing the refinement of the highs, you see? So a, a, a real contrast with the uh, problem with that MF Horn uh, Maynard Ferguson disc. My favorite is in the 80s in rock is the Doobie Brothers, and this is their best album, along with Stampede. So what were once Vices are now Habits and Stampede were two, uh, I think, the Doobie's two best albums. Yeah, I know Living on the Fault Line was really good too, but that was a little bit later. This is fantastic. This is rock, and it was mixed as rock. Not overly compressed, not bad in that regard, but it was mixed to be a wall of sound. There's no sound stage, there's no separation, there's just music, guitar, right in your face, and then the drums, the drums, and then even brass, they put in some nice, very musical, very nice, you know, but it's just a wall of rock and roll. Okay, no, you know, it doesn't even have much depth. It's just a wall of sound, and, and that's the way they mix it. It was rock and roll, you know, but fortunately it's not too compressed, so it sounds pretty good. And then we're back to refinement, wonderful refinement. This is an original master recording by Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs, and if you've never heard the most romantic saxophone in the world, you need to get John Clemmer's Touch. It ringing high-level bell percu percussion, deep, deep bass, Lots of space, sounds absolutely fabulous. And this is again, um, ABC Records Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs, 1975. This is the beautiful time. And the last one, I'm mentioning these because uh, I did a video on this already, but I want to mention it again. Why is it so fabulous? Sorry, let me tell you what it is. Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea on twin concert grand pianos. Wow. Dueling. Incredible. And it is. The side with Someday My Prince Will Come, followed by Liza, just blows your mind. But here's why. Because they didn't compress anything at all, intentionally. This was a live recording. So imagine that you're in the 10th row in a live concert hall with two grand pianos in a perfectly acoustic concert hall. And these performances have not been technically or electronically enhanced, nor is the sound limited or compressed. Bingo. And so this is what those speakers were made for, right? And other kinds of music. And you hear this and you're sitting there and you hear all the sound, all the tonal cues and ambiance of that sound stage uh, without any compression at all. And these two guys, pianos, singing, 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 and making beautiful music. That's it. That's what I wanted to share with you today. More videos coming up, some China topic videos coming up, all this crazy Trump stuff, right? Um, very interesting times. Thanks for letting me share this listening experience from listening session, I should say, from heaven to hell yesterday that we had. Uh, and that's it. We'll talk to you again. Thanks very much.